Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I would like to show you surgical trichothyrotomy. So first step, let's go over the indications of this procedure. The indications of this procedure is as follows. If you have a failure to ventilate the patient, or you have a failure to intubate the patient. So if your institution has a protocol or an algorithm, uh, it may look as follows. Uh, three attempts of intubation. If they fail, you may try a supraglottic airway. And if you still cannot ventilate the patient, you're going to go, go ahead and proceed to surgical uh, airway procedure, which is in this case would be a surgical cricothyrotomy. So you'll see what is the etiology that may predispose your patient to have an airway that you cannot ventilate and cannot intubate. So one example can be if a patient who has inhaled superheated gases and he have, has severe edema right, of his laryngeal structures, uh, after a while, you may not be able to introduce a tube. So what I mean by that, even though if you have an endotracheal tube and you, and you see the vocal cords, you may not be able to advance it. Another etiology may be someone who tried to commit suicide and they hung themselves and they have a severe ligature mark on their uh, neck, uh, the proximal aspect of it, and that um, rope, right, with the ligature mark has collapsed their uh, trachea. So you are unable, again, to advance your uh, tubing. So we determine we cannot squeeze the back to ventilate the patient even with good positioning, OPA and PA. We cannot intubate even with good positioning with video laryngoscopy. So now we made the uh, decision to go ahead and um, perform surgical cricothyrotomy. Uh, uh, oftentimes when this is advocated is uh, when your patient comes in, you already prepare and mark your location of the um, membrane, right, cricothyroid membrane, so that you know that after the third attempt and supraglottic airway did not work. So three attempts, supraglottic didn't work. You go straight to surgical cricothyrotomy. So what equipment are you going to need? The equipment that you're going to need is uh, some sort of a marker or Sharpie. This is actually used specifically uh, to mark on the skin. You're going to need a scalpel. Uh, here I have um, uh, a scalpel that's actually from a, a fast uh, cry kit. Uh, you could also use a scalpel uh, from a central line kit. So you need a scalpel, you need a, uh, a gum bougie with a code tip, and you need a 6.0 and, and a tracheal tube. Now, uh, I will advise you to already pre-thread this uh, when you start the procedure so that when you're performing it, you don't have to go through the step of placing it on. Uh, and the other aspect of it, uh, why do you use a gum bougie? So that it will facilitate the advancement of the tube uh, in the correct location. One way to know you in the trachea is we get hold up. Hold up, if you look at this uh, cutout of the mannequin here, if I'm in the correct location in the trachea, hold up usually occurs, right? Goes into right main stem bronchi and um, it will stop, it will stop, right? You cannot advance it any further. And the reason why it stops is because you have reached terminal airways. But one thing that you don't wanna do, you don't wanna jam this in very forcefully, like going up and down, you may cause a trauma to the airway. Now, if you inadvertently placed it in the esophagus, right, this will keep advancing all the way down. There will be no resistance and it will come, come out through the esophageal, right, um, sphincter and go to the stomach. So this is just to show you the reason why we use a gum bougie. So it's to assist as a rigid stylet and two, to uh, find the holdup that will tell you that you're in the correct location. So here I already pre-thread my endotracheal tube. We're gonna use a 6.0 uh, in this case, right? You can connect your 10 cc syringe to inflate the cuff. Uh, you're gonna need a BVM. And here I have entitled CO2 detector. You notice that I'm using a pediatric BVM because even for an adult patient, you don't need to empty the bag when you're squeezing them. Uh, the reason you use entitled CO2 is that you have a confirmation that your tube is in the correct location, right? Uh, what would be a contraindication for this procedure? Contraindication would be inability to find your landmarks. So now, now you'll say, so what are the landmarks? So landmarks, I'll show you on this mannequin and this as well. So the landmarks being is you start at the sternal notch, you make your way up and you find the cricoid uh, cartilage. Cricoid cartilage is very hard. You will not be able to cut through it with your scalpel. And the next membrane is thyroid cartilage. Again, it's also hard. And it's very hard for you to cut through the scalpel. But in between these two is called cricothyroid membrane. And this is the area that you're going to use in order to uh, essentially make your incision to insert your endotracheal tube. So don't go from top to bottom. You may miss it. If you go from bottom to top, so you feel, you're going to feel the rings, right? Those are your uh, cricoid rings uh, of the cricothyroid cartilage. 
and then you're going to fill a small indentation that's the tip of your thyroid cartilage and here is your cricothyroid membrane and this is actual 3d model right uh of the airway of the trachea and here you see these are the rings right of the cric cricoid cartilage and this is the uh the top the bottom portion of your thyroid in between is a cricothyroid membrane and you're making an incision a first vertical and then horizontal and we're going to be placing the tube in here so now that you saw the landmarks and uh, no indications of contraindication we're going to go ahead and commence the procedure so i'm going to first uh, place the stuff near me so it's uh, easy to get it uh, you want to be on the patient's uh, uh, right side so if you're a right-handed person ready you're going to be on the right-handed side of your patient and you want to get all your equipment uh, near you scalpel bvm right mark marker and for this procedure uh, you also have four by fours because this will bleed profusely you also want to be placing a, a head covering right eye protection because if someone is managing the airway from this side and they're squeezing the bag as they're trying to uh, ventilate with non-invasive maneuvers and you're trying to essentially make your incision the moment you make the incision and they squeeze the bag you will have blood uh, splashing in your face so you want to have face protection eye protection and a face mask to go with it uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to use the 6.0 and the tracheal tube. However, I'm just going to show you this is a quick cry kit. Uh, and it already has uh, all the stuff that you will need the cleaning solution here, being alcohol, betadine. And you have your cry here, which is already uh, sized, and you could employ this device. However, you may not have this all the time with you, this tactical cry kit. Uh, so we're going to use the 6.0 and the tracheal tube for this procedure. So we come to the patient. You are going to be standing at the patient's right side if you're right hand dominant. And what you're going to do is you're going to find your landmarks, right? So we already uh, utilized beta 9 or chlor chlorhexidine to essentially uh, cleanse, right? Uh, prepare the site. You're going to go down right from the sternal notch. You're filling your rings. This is your cricoid cartilage. Fill the prominence. This is your thyroid cartilage. In between is the cricothyroid membrane. So you're going to make your mark here right then you're going to cleanse again and you could use a sharpie or a pen that essentially non-erasable that you could use on your skin uh, once you made your uh, mark and you know your location uh, you must wear full ppe face protection eye protection uh, and the reason for that is that the person at the airway who is ventilating the patient uh, the moment you make your incision uh, and you gain access right you will get splattered to your face so you don't want to get that with uh, full protection you're going to expose the scalpel and very important when you're performing this procedure you want to rest your arm on the patient so here i'm going to pretend this is the patient's chest and i'm resting on it i'm going to hold the scalpel like a pen right uh, or like a pencil like you write and i'm going to make a vertical incision and then plunge cut side rotate to the side this hand is going to rest on the chin the thumb and the middle finger are going to stabilize right the cricoid cartilage so here i'm stabilizing i'm not flowering about with the scalpel resting on the patient's chest when the scalpel goes in this finger goes up when the finger goes in to probe scalpel goes away right so on the location fingers up good stabilization i make a vertical cut you may not always penetrate that area because of the soft tissues so you may need to make another incision that's fine right and you feel right and then your next cut is going to be a plunge cut straight down go to the side you rotate the blade and go to the other side blade goes away finger goes in right so close my scalpel sharps the next step is i'm going to take my preloaded gum bougie and i'm going to go in the back portion of my finger feeling the code tip this is the code tip going past the fat pad on my index finger the moment it goes past you could feel for a hold up right in the props in the distal airways uh don't go too overboard with this because you could again cause bleeding stop here i've held held up what i'm going to do is go ahead and introduce my 6.0 tube you wanted to go just bury this cuff past your incision marker if you go too deep you're going to write right main stem uh um this patient you're going to put this tube into the right uh bronchi right main stem so i stop here inflate and very important when you're taking this out um do it in a way that it's towards the patient's feet 
and you anchor the tube in with your thumb and index finger out BVM goes in and the uh, entitled CO2 is already pre-connected chest rise right. what's my value 35 45 for entitled CO2 once I'm comfortable that I have lung sounds I have positive uh, chest rise and I have entitled CO2 I'm going to go ahead and secure this tube in place I could pass this off to my partner to squeeze and here I already have some tape and this is a very easy way to secure it you're just going to put a bridge down like so this goes around your tube the other way and one more going the opposite way put a bridge go around the tube right uh, once this is secured you re reconfirm your lung sounds and your entitled co2 now if this incision is bleeding what you can do is you could take some tape and some four by four you don't need to go overboard what you can do is make a cut like so place it here take another gauze place it like this and then uh, again you need to mummify the patient enough to hold this in place will suffice and I also want to have ability to assess the area right to see if there's any hematoma formation or possibility of some cutaneous emphysema in case I went to the uh, false lumen so don't go overboard with um, doing that uh, and some uh, places will teach cutting down this tube what you got to be careful is that you don't cut out this pilot balloon. So you got to go higher than this. And then you have to disconnect this in order to regain uh, right, your adapter so it connects back to the BVM. So uh, not necessarily to cut this portion of the tube. This would suffice.